Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about how to figure out the function stack of a four-letter type code. Um, a four-letter type code like ISFP, uh, ENTJ, um, that represents the function stack, um, and that can be, be determined by a few simple steps. Um, a type code will show four different letters. So the, the first letter will either be E or I. Okay, the second will either be N or S then F or T, and lastly, J or P. Um, so there, uh, there are eight cognitive functions, as you can see here, um, but we only have a preference for four of them. So it's important to understand kind of uh, the order that they're arranged so that we can understand the 16 personality types a little better. Um, so the eight functions are broken down into perceiving functions and judging functions. Um, and you're going to use one pair of perceiving functions and one pair of the judging functions. Um, so as you can see here, the perceiving functions are intuition and sensing. And, uh, and they'll either be introverted, like here, introverted intuition and introverted sensing, or they'll be extroverted, like extroverted sensing and extroverted intuition. Um, so perceiving functions are used to collect data and take information in. Um, and then when we go over the judging functions, we have feeling and thinking. And they will also be either introverted or extroverted. So here we have introverted feeling, extroverted thinking, extroverted feeling, and introverted thinking. Um, so judging functions are used to make decisions um, or judgments about the information that we take in through our perceptions. Um, so each of the function, ha e each function has a pair, and um, the pairs are inseparable. So um, they're like opposing ends of an axis, and and they really can't exist we without the other function. Uh, so the pairs are Ni and Se, okay, uh, Ne and Si, and then uh, this function pair Fi and Te, and this function pair Fe and Ti. Um, so if, you, if you're an NI user, you must use SE, they're tied together. Um, if you are an FE user, you must use TI, and same for all of the functions. So these, these are like, uh, well, they're an axis, so, so they don't come apart. Um, if you use one of the functions, you have to use its, its pair. Um, so since the functions work in tandem with each other, uh, they're always trying to establish a balance. Um, and you'll notice that um, every type alternates between introverted and extroverted functions. So if your first function is extroverted, your second function will be introverted, and third function will be extroverted, and your fourth function will be introverted. So it just kind of alternates back and forth. Um, so in this case, for an ISFP, we know that their dominant function is an introverted function because we have an I instead of an E here. So what we can go ahead and do is alternate that all the way down in the stack. So we're going to start with an I, then we'll do E, I, E. And we need to go ahead and do ENFJ as well. So our first letter is an E, so we'll start with E in this case, then we'll go I, E, I. Okay, so now we, we already have uh, that alternated order. Um, so when it comes to determining the functions that a particular type uses, um, you know, that would be the first step to go ahead and determine IE, IE, or EI, EI. Okay? So to start actually finding the order of the, the complete function stack, uh, we're going to look at the second and third letter in our type code. So go ahead and circle uh, those letters. In this case, we have S and F. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and circle it in ENFJ as well. So here we have N and F. And then go ahead and circle numbers one and two in your function stack. So I'll go ahead and circle these two and these two for ENFJ. Um, so these two letters that we've circled will actually go into, into both of these blanks. We're just not sure which one. So it could be S, F, or it could be F, S. We're not sure yet. Um, so now comes the tricky part. So um, in, when you look at the code, okay, we always have a P or a J at the end of our, uh, of our type code. Um, so what this tells us 
is what our first extroverted function is. So um, if you are a P at the end, it's going to tell us what your first, that your first extroverted function in your stack is a perceiving function. So let's take ISFP for instance. Let's find the first extroverted function. So here we go, it's in the, the second position. So we know that our first extroverted function will be a perceiving function because of the P. And if we look back at the two letters that are circled here, which letters are the per which letter is the perceiving function? Well, it would be S because if we look over in a perceiving category, it's made of, up of intuition and sensing. So we know that the sensing, uh, the S is our perceiving uh, function. So we're going to go ahead and put S next to our first extroverted function. Okay, so now that we have the S, we can go ahead and um, cross that off. Uh, we've eliminated S, so we just have F left over, and we know that F will go here because these, these two central functions will go in the, the first two positions. Uh, so what's interesting is um, we have uh, the ISFP, uh, they lead with introverted feeling, uh, and they follow that up with extroverted sensing. So even though there's a P on the end of ISFP, um, ISFPs actually lead with the judging function, so they are dominant judgers. Um, so even though it looks like, you know, we think of perceiving types as being very open-ended, and, and ISFPs certainly have that propensity because of their, their second auxiliary function is extroverted sensing, which is a perceiving function. Um, but you know, they're, they're going to make their decisions pretty quickly, their value judgments pretty quickly because of their dominant introverted feeling. So um, now we, we have to fill in the remaining blanks here. So um, uh, when we talked in the beginning about the function pairs, this is kind of when that, when that comes into play. Um, so in ISFP, they use FI, and we know that since they use FI, we have to come over here, and that is uh, on the TE axis. So they must use TE as well. And uh, since TE is an extroverted function, if we come over here, we just have an introverted function and an extroverted function left to fill in. We can go and put the T next to the E. So we have TE down there. And then um, because we have SE in our function stack, if we find SE, we see that its pair is introverted intuition, or NI. So uh, our remaining function is an introverted function. There we go. Ni. So that is the completed function stack of an ISFP. Um, and, and I'll go ahead and fill the ENFJ one out as well. So again, um, we, we're going to look at the last letter in the type code. It's a J. So we know that the first extroverted function, which in this case is number one, will be a judging function. And which of these two letters is a judging function. It would be F for feeling. So we can go ahead and fill in the F there. And so um, that eliminates F. We'll go ahead and put N in the remaining blank. Okay, and so now we've just got to figure out what FE is paired with and what NI is paired with because we have these two down here to fill out. FE is paired with TI. So let's find the I. Okay, and then NI is paired with SE. And so that is a completed function stack of the ENFJ. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, thanks for watching.